what it does affect a huge number of New Zealanders is what happens on our farms, what happens out in the provinces, um, what happens in the dairy shed, what happens in the shearing shed and out in the paddocks and the pastures and the orchards, right, out in the fields. And big news this week, the government's plan to bring agriculture into the emissions trading cap scheme and essentially, what is essentially, I don't think you can say it to any other way, a new tax on farming. <coughs> a new tax that some say could take a quarter of our farmers out. Well, is it that dire? Is it that bad? Where are we at on this? I thought for an overview, a guy I talk to regularly on, on my show, he is there, isn't he? Kelly, we're all set with him. Andrew Hoggart, we are. Um, President of Federated Farmers, Andrew Hoggart, who joins us on the line now. And how are you, mate? Yeah, not too bad. Okay, busy week. First up, you yeah, knew this was yeah. coming, eh? Yes, you knew yes, this was coming, yeah. I, didn't you? Uh, the, some of the details we didn't know until, like, um, the night before when we got the embargo copy and we saw the, the actual modelling. So that was a bit that really surprised me um, that... You know, that they were willing to put out a document that talked about how many, you know, how much production we would lose and how many, um, the, the loss of profitability to farms. And yeah, so that one was a bit surprising. The key changes I knew were coming and I wasn't too keen on them. Um, but yeah. Mm. Will this, to your mind, will this new regime, if implemented, and I think we've got to say it's a pretty big if, I think this is a huge political risk and we've got an election coming. Um, do you think it will help reduce New Zealand's carbon emissions? Do you think this policy will save the planet? Um, well, um, well, the modelling shows that it'll take out 20% of, um, or near on 20% of our sheep and beef production and 5% of our dairy production. So, yeah, it'll reduce the emissions associated with that uh, in New Zealand. Um, but then what happens is that food gets produced somewhere else in the world. Um, they've all got higher footprints than us. And so you'd have to say, no, it's not going to save the planet. It'll probably uh, make it worse. Yeah, because the thing is we are the most carbon efficient farmers in the world, right? That is still a fact, isn't it? That's a provable fact, yep. a demonstrable fact. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, very definitely. Yep. What do you say to the Wallies who wrote this policy when you point that out to them and say if we're not making it, the demand will still be there. Someone else will make it less carbon efficiently. What's the response? Yeah, well, is, well, I mean, the response well, I mean we had um in the original proposal that we reluctantly agreed to, you know, put our name to, um, yeah. back in May, there was, um, around the pricing principles, you know, it said the price should, you know, be uh, sort of a compromise between uh, progress towards targets, um, emissions leakage, which is what I just described before, um, farm profitability, food security, and the availability of mitigation. So, I mean, the government response has been, no, we're only interested in meeting the targets. So, uh, you know, th they know these arguments. They've heard them from me and others multiple times over. The fact that it's just about the targets for them um, tells me they're not particularly interested, um, that it is, you know, the focus is we must meet our targets so we can get claps when we go to cop. So we don't care about the 20 to 25 percent of uh, beef dairy farmers who might go out of business. Well, I mean, they put the document out with those numbers in it. Uh, and those aren't, those aren't my numbers. They're in the Yeah, that numbers. is the stunning they're, they're, they're thing proposal. is that they admit yeah. we're taking out a huge chunk of a huge industry uh, in New Zealand and we're just doing it in the pursuit of, well, you know, it depends where you stand on it. I'm probably called a heretic. But, you know, in the pursuit of reducing the emissions of a country that produces uh, 0.00172% of the world's uh, carbon. Um, yep. What has been the reaction in the industry and also in associated industries? So has this in the last two or three days impacted people who are going for loans on their farms or investment decisions on farms, Andrew? 
No, I wouldn't. I would think it would be far too early to, for anyone to be having uh, those sort of discussions or concerns raised. But certainly the feedback, you know, I've been involved in federal farmers for 17 years. Um, the last two days I've received more farmer feedback than at any point preceding <laughs> in those preceding 17 years. Um, so wow. there's been a huge farmer response Um you know, I've had numerous calls, texts, messages on Facebook and all the rest of it, um, you know, saying good on you for speaking up for farming. Um, a lot of, you know, some people going into their concerns for what it might mean for, you know, particularly uh, there was a text from a guy, Ty Happy, um, small sheep and beef farm, you know, it's just their family. You know, is it going to be viable for the, the son to take it over? Um, you know, and just looking, you know, particularly talking to the East Coast farmers, you know, they're already feeling the pressure from, you know, all the afforestation that's happening due to um, the carbon credits and all the carbon farming. And, you know, that's sort of a, a pull factor. Now we're going to introduce a push factor. They're hugely worried about what that's going to mean. You know, how much more is that afforestation going to be accelerated? You know, and what's going to be left of their communities? Because when you've got a carbon farm, there's no one working there. That means there's no kids going to local schools. There's no coaches for the local rugby club or players or the netball club or any of the other sort of community activities that happen. And it just shrinks the community. And when that happens, other people that are left in the community go, why do I want to stay here? Um, there's nothing for me or my family or my kids. And, you know, it just snowballs. And then that flows into those towns like Wairoa and you might see, you know, there's a potential for tipping points to be hit for meatworks. And, yeah, just a real huge flow-on effect. Um, you know, we've got to be a hell of a lot more smarter about this. You know, as we keep saying in feds, we want a system where it encourages farmers to farm better, not less. Mm. Are you disappointed? or buoyed by the reaction of, of opposition political parties to this plan. Some might say it's been a little bit lacklustre or the rejection of the plan's been pretty lacklustre. And I guess the government spun it quite well because the Greens say they're disappointed, which makes you think it's not as bad as it could have been. And also I yeah. think the line is being spun is that farmers are into it and they understand the need for change. Well, I haven't had a farmer yet ring me that's into this um, I'm sure there might be a couple of them out there um, but I haven't heard from them and you know, most of the feedback I'm getting is well all of the feedback I'm getting is that um, farmers are solidly concerned by this process um, in terms of the opposition parties look it was good to hear Christopher Luxton um, we'll see their press release yesterday stating their concerns day, with it. That, that took um, them a day though Andrew yeah yeah, that took yeah, them a yeah, day yeah. to come up with that. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's politicians, you know. They got to see which way the tea leaves are blowing. All right, but you believe them that they'd get rid of it, they'd scrap it. Uh, we'll wait and see. I mean, um, to be fair, the you know, if you look at when John Key took over from Helen Clark, um, there was a whole bunch of stuff a bunch of us thought would probably be removed that stayed and is still there. So. You know, I think um, what you know, if they get into power, we'll be putting the pressure on that. Hey, you made these words back here. You need to stick to them. Okay. What is and forgive me, uh, I've been a little slow this week. What is the timeline for implementation? At what stage could you roll this policy back before the election? Yeah, so what's happening now is a consultation on. So this isn't a proper. You know, this is not legislation that's going to enter the House just yet. This is consultation on here, uh, here are the government's thoughts. Yeah. And yeah. they'll get those that feedback back and then they'll draft up that legislation sometime in the new year. And then it'll enter, yeah. you know, Parliament. So I guess there's a, you know, and if we're looking at the amount of stuff that they are trying to plan to do before the election, um, Mm. whether it even makes it uh, um, to Parliament before the election's a question. Um, you know, I think, I think we've got a good you know, three or four months of back and forth on this. Um, and, yeah, but I think once that legislation's written, um, that's, it's, it, yeah, that's sort of, I think that'll end up being what happens. I doubt we'd see any change in the select committee. Um, Certainly to this date, uh, we haven't seen anything we've submitted on. There hasn't been much much change in the select committee. Um, 
So, yeah, I, th- I think that over the next few months er- into early next year will be that period where, yeah. you know, a lot of pressure can push for, will, will result yeah. in some change, I would think. Yeah. You have been pretty clear and forthright uh, this morning and, and indeed over the last few days. Dairy, uh, some other groups haven't in the dairy industry, haven't. Um, meat and beef or lamb and beef. Uh, there are a lot of groups who seem to have gone woke on this in your industry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, this is our job. This is what Federated Farmers are there for. We're we're to be the the, the you know the, the unadulterated raw voice of farmers, and um, so you know this is the role we should be playing. Um, you know, we're the advocacy body. To be fair, those other bodies there. You know, their primary purpose is to do industry good activity around research, development, extension, um, that sort of stuff. And quite frankly, that's the place I'd rather they operate. Do you think they've wimped out? Do you think they're failing farmers in their attitude? They're acquiescent? Well, well, quite frankly, I think that I would prefer that actually they step back from all this sort of stuff and just, you know, when it came time to advocate, leave it to the... The, the group that um, uh, are paid by voluntary farmer membership that represent the, the views of farmers that are willing to pay for it. And okay, and who so would you that, direct that, my that, that at most, point, most pointedly? Which organisation would you direct that criticism? Oh, all of them, actually. Yeah, I think, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think, you know, feeds, I want feds to be the... When people think of who's advocating for farmers, I want people to think the feds are at the top of the list and um, they're the ones that get listened to. Um, the yeah. other bodies, you know, I think they're there for, you know, they, f- they fill a, fulfill an important function, um, but because it's a compulsory levy, because they also receive government funding for a lot of the research, um, you know, it puts them in a, a difficult position if they try and take on this advocacy um, space. And, yeah, my preference is they stay out and leave it to us. Fair enough, Andrew. Hey, thank you very much indeed for your time this morning. You're going to have a busy wee run-up to the election, <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm predicting. And I thank you very <laughs> yeah. much indeed for your time this morning. That is Andrew Hoggard, President of Federated Farmers, and a clear message there. Um, to Dairy New Zealand, uh, Meat and Beef New Zealand, who really have come out supporting the government policy, that in its own admission, by its own mission, admission could see um, a 20 to 25% reduction in the agriculture sector in New Zealand, which would be a bloody disaster in my humble opinion.